Pink Diamond's human zoo contains some of the last living organisms outside of Steven himself that represents her legacy. What is that legacy, you may ask? Well, it's human beings preserved in an orbital station Pink Diamond deemed once as trophies. Yes, we all thought that it was crazy seeing her transform from pink to rose. Well, this rogue diamond had other tricks up her sleeves long before that particular transformation act. The question here is, why did Pink Diamond create the human zoo? Yeah, the surface answer could be that these were in fact human beings she found to be special and wanted to preserve them and their well-being. But if we take a look at the situation and place it within the confines of reality, there's a deeper reasoning behind why Pink Diamond kept a zoo full of humans. What's going on guys? It's Akeem with Channel Frederator, and on today's episode of Cartoon Conspiracy, we're exploring what might have been the real reason behind Pink Diamond keeping and maintaining a zoo full of humans. Was it for her own personal gain or was she secretly protecting those through some means of natural selection with her doing the selecting? Well, let's find out. Now what we know about the human zoo is it was a containment facility for Pink Diamond to further observe a select amount of human beings where their daily actions were dictated by an omnipotent voice that spoke to them through devices placed on their ears. Now the two main portions of the human zoo are the assimilation bay where you go through the process to prepare you for the next portion, the containment area. Now this is where all the captive humans dubbed Zoomin are housed. Holly Blue Agate manages the zoo and a group of quartz gems guard it. Now that's the simplified makeup of the human zoo, but what we want to do is find out why, just why did Pink Diamond even feel such a construct was even necessary? To find out, we need to do some deep diving into what the definition of a zoo, a human zoo means in our reality, as well as placing some sociological constructs on the actions of creating a human zoo and the consequences of such. Let's get nerdy, yeah. And what better way to do this than by reading a book entitled the Human Zoo. Yeah, The Human Zoo was written by zoologist Desmond Morris, and it explores the nature of civilized society, comparing the human inhabitants of a city to that of the animal inhabitants of a zoo, which have their survival needs provided for, but at the cost of living in an unnatural environment which is pretty similar to the unnatural environment the zoomin find themselves in. Based on further readings from the human zoo, it talks about humans in their cities and animals in their zoos both have food and shelter provided for them and have considerable free time on their hands. But they both ultimately have to live in an unnatural environment. That's right guys, both humans in cities and animals in zoos, unnatural environments. And as such, they're both likely to have problems in developing healthy social relationships as well as suffer from isolation and boredom and live in a limited amount of physical space. I know you guys are probably like, what? A natural environment? Yes, cities were man-built, guys. Keep that in mind. If it wasn't for us humans, well, we wouldn't have these skyscrapers and uh, asphalt with vehicles driving on them. So I kind of see this author's point. Essentially, according to the author, living in a city as a human is equivalent to the limited surroundings of a zoo. Based on such, we, to a certain degree, face similar restraints as humans in zoos. You might even refer to the situation as being less of an urban jungle and, well, more of a human zoo. Yeah. Now applying Desmond Morris's research and analysis to that of the human zoo created by Pink Diamond, though we may be dealing with both humans in this particular situation, it's likely that Pink Diamond adapted what she saw as the basic needs of a human being, clothing, shelter, food, mating, etc., and decided to implement her own vision in a more confined space for those she wanted to pay special attention to. I mean, if we're to believe what the human zoo states, there's not much of a difference between that of humans in an urban environment and animals being held in a zoo. So based in that particular reality, what Pink Diamond was doing with her very own constructed zoo wasn't all that inhumane. Just another form of a smaller and more concentrated form of the human zoo we all currently live in in cities. The human zoo could be considered Pink Diamond's way of conserving the human race. Just in case something were to happen to Earth, 
there just might be a chance of repopulation. To further steep things into reality, we can compare it to the seed vault located in the Arctic Mountains. The Slavbard Global Seed Vault has been around since the early 2000s, designed to ensure the survival of the world's most precious plants. Just in case any large-scale regional crisis were to occur, these particular seeds are stored as backups just in case said crisis leads to the loss of a particular seed. They're pretty much spare copies of seeds held in gene banks worldwide. Sometimes referred to as the Doomsday Seed Vault, the chilled storage chambers are located within the mountains of Norway's island Spitsbergen and form the protected repository of the world's food corps. Scientists have worked hard on the development of this particular structure near the Arctic Circle as a means to withstand natural disasters so that we may rebuild after a large-scale regional crisis. Perhaps Pink Diamond had the very same idea in mind when she began populating her outpost facility with specially selected human beings. Could be. At the end of the rebellion, the Diamonds faced two massive losses. The presumed destruction of one of their own in Pink Diamond and the loss of her colony in Earth. In retaliation, the Diamonds combined their powers and launched a direct attack against Earth. The corrupting light was released by the Diamond Authority as a doomsday weapon once they recognized their encroaching defeat. This corrupting light would behave like a long-lasting persistent biological agent infecting any surviving gem on the planet. The Diamonds wanted Pink Diamond's failed colony on Earth to be completely destroyed, including all organic life forms and creatures on the planet. That means, well, bye-bye Earth. Pink Diamond had a plan, and it's likely she had the foresight that this might be a likely outcome based on her overall actions Thus, she decided to implement her very own doomsday contingency plan, similar to that of the seed vaults near the Arctic Circle. She selected certain humans, perhaps those she developed a bond with or saw certain attributes she felt would be important in the rebuilding process of human society, and kept them within an orbital station where they would be protected from any attack on Earth and its population. Becoming Rose Quartz was just phase one of Pink Diamond's overall plan to circumvent the plans of her sisters. Phase Phase two was quite possibly rebuilding during the aftermath. So ultimately, Pink Diamond's true intentions for creating the human zoo was to preserve and rebuild the human race should there be an attack causing its destruction. It's something we here on Earth in reality are currently doing with certain plants and food crops that we deem important to the rebuilding process and our society as a whole. Pink Diamond considered us humans just as important to rebuilding, so, well, she did the very same with us. So for Pink Diamond's true reason behind creating the human zoo being to preserve and rebuild the human race, well, I'm giving this one five zoom in out of five. Some might look at it as odd for her to pluck humans from their home world and place them within the artificial construct, but the first humans within the human zoo may have been willing participants in this utopic society Pink Diamond created. I mean, to me, Pink Diamond strikes me as a gem that was very convincing personality, and seeing her throughout the show as Rose Quartz, we all know that she's quite alluring. At one point, she had a bunch of lions following her. I mean, you gotta be alluring for that to happen. But I wanna know your thoughts on this. Do you agree or do you have a different take on why Pink Diamond kept a human zoo? Let's start the conversation down below. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe for more and let us know what other theories you'd like for us to explore in future episodes of Cartoon Conspiracy. Ring that bell to join our notification squad so you're always aware of when we're dropping new gems such as this. As always, I'm Akeem for Channel Frederator reminding you to never forget guys, Frederator loves you.